Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to test for a parasitic drain. Let me show you what tools I got. Here I have a, I have two fluke meters and a AC-DC amp clamp and a uh, just a little alligator clip. I like to use, you, you don't have to have this many tools, really all you need is is just one one meter that has the amp jack but I, I, I have these so I, I use them. Let me show you how I set this up. First thing I want to do is I want to see how much amperage is flowing through the through the battery right now uh, because if it's over 10 amps and you stick your fuse meters in line with it you can blow out your fuse in your meter so it's a good idea to first things first is to check it with an amp clamp to make sure it's not drawing excessive current it's going to blow your meter you can do a parasitic drain test either on the positive side or the negative side it doesn't matter uh, I myself find it safer to do it on the negative side uh, the way I, the way I my thinking in that is if I hook up my meter here and I'm working on that and something happens and you short to ground well if you're working on the negative side and you short to ground you're you're fine you know you're not going to damage so there's just I, th I feel this side's less less potential for damage and it's just my personal preference you can do a drain on e either side it's you know, whatever comes out has to come back in and current flow so pick a side but I, I, I like this side better so that's what I'm gonna do so the way the way this one works is I put it on put it on amp 40 amps and this is an AC DC right now it's saying AC so I gotta switch it to DC and then I zero the meter by hitting the relative button and zero and that's ready to go so I'm just gonna put this on here and see yeah, see, like that's almost one amp right there. That's point right now. It's drawing about an amp, going that way. 0 0.93, 0 0.93. That's right at about an amp. So that would be okay. That's okay to hook my meter up to. Let me check this one. That one's uh, four amps. So four amps, about five, six, about six amps is drawing right now. I suspect that that current is a. Uh, I was drawing from my uh, uh, door being open. Let me get both of these if I can. Okay, right now I'm drawing. Total coming back to the battery. That's about 5.6 amps. That's way too high, but it's probably because I got my door open. I'm going to disconnect my negative battery. Set it, set it aside. Now, the way I set it up is I use, I use this little uh, alligator clamp, or whatever you want to call it, because I, I give it a good, make sure I got a good contact. And I pull off one of the, well, let me go ahead and pull this off first. Pull off this cover. And, okay, I'm going to hook up the alligator clip. Now I'm using this as a spot to hook on my, my meter. I'll show you. Okay, first let me show you how to set up this meter. Um, when you're doing an amp check, I want to leave the black one here and I want to put my red one here but before I hook up my meter I want to make sure these fuses are good otherwise I could be checking amperage all day and it would say zero here and I wouldn't even know it so a good thing to check is is to check to make sure these fuses are good the way you do that is you put it on voltage fluke fluke 87s have a built-in meter checker I mean, I'm sorry fuse checker Jeez. Fluke 87s have a built-in fuse checker. You'll hear a noise. Hear that noise? That means that 10 amp fuse is good. Hear that noise? That means that 400 milliamp fuse is good. If you didn't hear that noise, well, you don't want to do your test because, hey, it would tell you you don't have any current flow. So you want to check your fuses before doing. Just a, just a good, good practice. 
So I'm going to go ahead and go to my larger jack first. It's good. Okay, so I'm going to put this on, put it on amps, milliamps amp setting. Put this on amps. And I'm ready to go. Okay, normally your meter leads are, you leave them in common, and this is your volts, ohms, and like diode check and whatnot, but when you're dealing with amperage, you gotta take this common port here. I'm, I'm sorry, you leave the common port. When you're dealing with amperage, you have to move the red volt ohm lead to this amperage lead. And this is designed to, to read amperage up to 10 amps. Don't stick it in here because this one's only read up to 400 milliamps. And if you go over, depending on which jack you're in, if you go over that, you'll blow the fuse inside this meter. And that's another reason why I use my amp clamp to see how much amperage it was drawing. Because I didn't want to blow up this meter when I... Uh, so, what you do is you take out this lead. I like to leave it out just for a minute until I hook up everything. And then I put it back. But I'm going to set, set this here so you guys can see what's going on. But, and then I like to take my lead out. You don't have to. You can leave it in there if you want to. It's not a big deal. But I'm going to take my black lead. I'm going to hook it up to this post here on the... Uh, Basically what I'm doing is I'm connecting my meter in series with the uh, negative wire to battery. And got a good bite on the... Got a good bite on that negative, negative cable. I'm going to hook this up. I got a good bite. Now that's hooked up, I want to plug in my leads to the, the big amp jack. Now I put it on amperage. And right now it's drawing 245. Right now it's drawing 200 and about 250 milliamps. Let me see. Uh, as you guys can see, that's... Uh, at rest right now it's drawing 250 milliamps and that's way too much. A normal range on a car is usually you know anywhere from 5 milliamps to 20 milliamps with a maximum of 50 milliamps. You don't want to go over 50 because otherwise you know it's just going to drain your battery too fast. <clears throat> now there are several ways you can go about doing this. Um, you can use an amp meter in, in line with in line like this. Um, you can use an amp amp clamp, uh, or you can use your voltmeter. I myself, I like to use a voltmeter set on millivolts, and I like to read read look for voltage drops across fuses <clears throat> because uh, when you're dealing with a fuse or any connection in a in a circuit, when there's current flowing, you're going to have a voltage drop. When you're just reading across a fuse, it's it's so tiny that if your meter was on regular volts, it probably wouldn't see it. So uh, I like to do it this way because it's fast. You don't have to pull out any fuses. Uh, so you're looking for voltage current flow, and anytime you have current flow, you're going to have a volt drop. So all the all the fuses I see that read straight zeros, no current flow. That means there's no current flow. You go on to the next one. You're looking for a fuse that has a bolt drop across there. Now, I find this way is the fastest way, but you know, that's that's the, that's my go-to check. And if I don't find anything using that method, then I'll go to I'll start pulling fuses. See, I got my leads plugged into the uh, common and the volt ohm. And I got my setting on millivolts, not voltage, millivolts DC. I want to measure, I'm looking for tiny little volt drops across my 
the fuses. Okay, this here's my fuse box. I'm gonna go look for some current flowing in the fuses. Got my meter on millivolts. Now, to make sure I'm not blocking anything. All I'm going to do is read these little parts of the fuse here. Little metal tabs. I don't know if you can see these or not, but don't have a camera, man. Okay. okay. Let me show you how this works. See how one of my leads are not touching anything? My reading is erratic. They call that ghost voltage. It's jumping along, it's just bouncing and floating. And let me show you what I read when I when I put my meter leads together. Dead zeros. That would look like a short. But when current's not flowing and it's you know there's one side open, there's no difference of potential. There's no current. There's no voltage drop. You could read straight zeros, and that's what you want to see. You want to see straight zeros. If you read anything on millivolts, like 0.1 volt, 0.2, point whatever, that means there is current flowing in that circuit. So the first one I checked when I read across here. I'm just going to drop my leads across here. I'm going to try to do this with one hand so I can kind of show you what I'm looking for. Like, See that? how that's 0.1? That means there's current flowing in that circuit right now. So maybe I ought to pull this 60 amp fuse, but usually these big, these big fuses feed other fuses. So it would stand to reason that whatever circuit this controls is you know, probably a bunch of stuff. But watch, let me go down the line. Let's see if there's a, another draw somewhere else. See that one? No draw. So that circuit right there, not my problem. See that one? No draw. See this one? See how easy that is? That's got current flow. I'm reading point. I'm, I'm reading voltage drop across this resistor. I mean, a little resistor. Well, it's kind of like a resistor. It's a fuse, but when you read a voltage drop across it, that means current is flowing. So I know that this 60 amp current is my is my problem. See? I got a 40 amp here, reading dead zeros, no current flow in that circuit, No zero, dead zeros, no current flow, no current flow in the green one, no current flow in the, in the 50 amp, let me go down to this 20 amper, no current flow. No current flow in that big one right there. 40 amper. No current flow. No current flow. So, as far as the big fuses are go, which these probably feed the little fuses, there's a there's a draw right there. 0.1 draw. Now, I'm going to check all the little fuses, but you get the it's easier to show you on demonstrate on the big fuses, but I'm going to I'm going to I'm gonna, I need both hands for the little fuses. Okay, I'll just hopefully you guys can see me. I'll tell you what the meter says. If it's zeros, I move on. If it's reading a drop, I note it. All right, this 10 amp, they're, they're saying the little bitty fuses are hard to get to, but okay, reading zeros, that one's good. That one's good. And if when you, if you read your meter and it's like, it's jumping, that means you don't have a good connection on your fuse. So make sure you got a good connection. You either want to see like a really good reading, you don't want to see one jumping around. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. 
That one's good, zeros. That one's good. 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 And that one's good. Okay, well, it looks like my only problem in this box is this one right here. So, I'm going to pull this fuse and then let's see if my 220 amp draw goes away. Set up so you can see it. I'm going to pull this big black 60 amp fuse if I can get it. Bam. That was it. See how it just dropped? Like I said, uh, you know, remember what I said, less than 50, 5 to 20 milliamps is what I should be reading? Well, everything else besides this circuit is normal. So, I just found it. Um, it was pretty, I'm not exactly sure what it is or what what's the problem, but you can see when this fuse is plugged in, I got, let me plug it in. 200, 250 milliamps. When I unplug it, it goes away. So I'm going to go do some further researching and figure out what it is this circuit feeds. And I'll go to those fuses and see. I'm going to go look at a schematic. Okay. I went inside and I looked up the uh, power distribution uh, on this particular vehicle, 99 Explorer. And I'm trying to show you guys, I'm looking for the, basically, you know, it comes out of the battery, goes to like a bus bar, and all these. So this big fuse, the battery comes in, feeds a bus bar, and there's big fuses. That one I showed you guys was a 60 amp fuse. That feeds other fuses. So, and the individual fuses feed the, uh, you know, other circuits. So what I'm doing, uh, I'm looking up the uh, ones for the 60 amp fuse which it's not it's not showing it on the front page here but I found it here it was it was fuse number one I don't know how well we could read this but hold on a second to make this stupid thing focus and it won't anyway yeah okay I think it focused so the, these are was all bus bars and this is fuse one that big big black 60 amp fuse that feeds to fuse 5, diagram 3 of 5. Let me find that real quick. Okay. I think I found it. This is uh, from Maxi Fuse 1. This is the E mark. Uh, that one had a 60 amp fuse and then said 2E. And this is the E. So from Maxi Fuse 1. Basically the fuse that feeds the driver's side fuse panel. I think. It just says uh, fuse junction panel. And basically I'm looking for fuse 5, fuse 9, fuse 13, fuse 1. Uh, and that feeds fuse 25, which really that stuff feeds instrument cluster, the, the gym module, the anti-theft, uh, memory seat, power antenna, Brake pressure switch, brake pedal switch, data link connector. Uh, so that feeds a couple things. What I'm going to do is um, basically, I'm going to go find these fuses. I'm going to pull one of them. I'm going to see if my current drops. If it doesn't drop, I'm going to pull the next one. See if my current drops until I find the one that the circuit feeds that's messed up. Hope that makes sense. But I'm looking for fuse 5, 9, 13, 1 and 25 okay remember that that 60 amp fuse fuse number one inside the, the battery junction box should feed uh, should feed fuse number five in here which should be should be 
So unless I got some bad information, it should be one, two, three, four, five. That's a 10 amp, which it is. Fuse number nine, six, seven, eight, nine, which is a uh, 7.5, and it is on here. So I need to take out this one, this one, 9.5, 13, number 20, and number number one. So basically it looks like Looks like one five nine thirteen. And last but not least, uh, choose twenty five. This one down here. So one of one of these is going to be my draw. So since I'm not disabling the door here, I'm just going to pull one out and go check it with the door shut. I'm just going to pull fuse one. Close the door, go check. All right, gonna shut the door. Nope, that wasn't it. Still reading 250. So. This one back in. Yeah, that's number fuse number one. Let me try fuse five. This 10 amp here. Let me go check. Oh, still reading 250. I'm going to pull fuse number uh, nine. Should be right here. Oh, got to shut the door. Always forget. Nope, still reading 250. Pull fuse 13. Let me see if that was it. Nope, that's not it. Now fuse 25. I'm going to count these. That's 13, so 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. This one right here. Alright, let's see if this is it. Damn, that's the one. It dropped from 250 to 9.9. .9. That's where my circuit is drawing current. Okay. That's where I was at. So I'll show you guys. Looks like this fuse, uh, 7.5 amp, feeds my instrument cluster feeds my gym module and my passive anti-theft system module so one of these modules is staying on I don't know which one's staying on but one of them staying on and causing me of causing me a excessive amp draw